Good afternoon, everyone. And for those of you who are visiting, welcome to the Church of the Ascension. I would also like to extend a welcome to our folks who are joining us live stream. Thank you for supporting the family. Would you please rise? shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I Blessed are your poor, for the kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are you that weep and mourn, for one day you shall laugh. And if wicked tongues insult and hate you, all because of me. Blessed, blessed are you. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And welcome to this celebration of the life of Tony Sisson. For the family, we would like to extend our condolences and our prayers and know that Tony has gone on to what the Father has intended for him all along. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The altar, the vestments worn by the clergy are white, reminding us of the day of Tony's baptism. He had a white garment put on to signify his new life in Christ. Today, we believe that he is clothed in glory and we celebrate his return to God the Father. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Tony died in Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him in eternal glory. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on a cross has freed us from eternal death and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for our brother. And then Thanks, Bill. Bear with me. Let us pray for our brother that he may share in Christ's victory and let us pray for ourselves that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. God of loving kindness, listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your son has risen from the dead 
and our hope that your servant Tony will also rise again. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. First reading. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. For I am already being poured out like a libation. At the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love, in the face of hatred, calming me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness in life, 
For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. to die close to my word keep faithful for your faithfulness I will give you the crown of life be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you lord when mary came to where jesus was and saw him she fell at his feet and said to him lord if you had been here my brother would not have died when jesus saw her weeping and the jews who had come with her weeping he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said where have you laid him they said to him Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved them. See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took the stone away, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to the crowd, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen what he had done, began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Dear friends, we are gathered with you today in the sorrow of the death at Tony. To the Sisson family, we offer comfort and condolences in your time of grief. The reality of death with all its pain and sense of loss, confronts us at this moment. But as we are reunited now in sorrow, we are also united in something else, our faith. Confronted by the reality of death, we must allow ourselves to be confronted with the reality of our faith. The faith is not a maybe, or an I hope so, or a fantasy, or wishful thinking but it is a reality. Our faith opens our minds to the whole picture about life, death, and what happens after death. 
Only in light of our faith can we begin to understand what has happened to Tony and how we are to keep going from here. When in our faith we speak about heaven and resurrection and the next life, we do not speak about those things primarily because they give us consolation and strength. They certainly do that, but the primary reason we speak of these things is because they are true. God has spoken his word to us. We hear it in the scriptures and in the teachings of the church, and we respond by saying, yes, I believe it is true. God has broken the silence about death and told us that he has conquered it. Death was not part of God's original plan. It came into the world because of sin. Death is not from God. Death is turning away from God. Yet God did not leave us at death's door. He sent Christ, who died and rose again and conquered death. God has spoken to the world through Christ, and he told us that he wants to give us victory over death in and through Jesus Christ. Because of this, Christians are not silent in the face of death. Many people on coming to a wake or a funeral do not know what to say. Death seems to have the last word. But we who believe are not silent. We speak. Christ is risen. Death has been conquered. Many people think that the story of human life is birth, life, and death. For Christians, it's different. The story is not birth, life, and death, but rather life, death, and resurrection. Death does not have the last word. Life does. Death is not the last period after the last sentence of the last chapter of the human story. There is another chapter to come. Death is not the end of the human story. It's the middle. The end of the story is, is resurrection and a life that has no end. The farewell that we give Tony today is a temporary farewell. The inurnment we give Tony is a temporary inurnment. He will live and he will rise. The ceremony today contains many reminders of this and it points us to the fact that Tony was baptized. We sprinkled the urn with holy water at the beginning of the ceremony. This recalls the waters of baptisms that were once poured over Tony. The white vestments remind us of the white garment that was placed on him at baptism, a sign of the new life in Christ given to the Christian. The Easter candle is present at every baptism and symbolizes the risen Christ. When Tony was baptized, his baptismal candle was lit and the life of the risen Christ was poured into his soul. He began to share here on earth the life of heaven. At baptism, God rescued Tony from the power of death. He literally snatched him from the dominion of death and transferred him into the kingdom of God, a kingdom of eternal life. Christ said to Tony on that day, you do not belong to death, you belong to me. A Christian does not merely die. A Christian dies in Christ. Those two words, in Christ, make all the difference in the world. We belong to him by baptism, and we live in him by a life of prayer, obedience to his teachings, and faithfulness to his sacraments in the church. If we live in Christ and die in Christ, we will rise in Christ. I did not have the pleasure of knowing Tony. In talking with his wife of 20 years, Alyssa, and his sister, Judy, I learned of someone that I wish I did know. Tony loved deeply and was the kind of person who quietly went about doing the right things behind the scenes. Authenticity and focus were his hallmarks. Along with these attributes, his sense of humor resulted in a marriage proposal that took place at Fenway Park, completely surprising his intended wife. He was always focused on the positive. I was especially truck, excuse me, struck by his profound love of neighbor. He generously shared his time and his talent 
with the local community and with his family. He was especially fond of his nephew and his niece, Rico and Asia. He made awesome cookies and he would do it for no reason at all kinds of times. And they had a secret ingredient. I also understand that he said he would take that secret to his grave. I trust he left it behind, did he? Okay. <laughs> In short, Tony's life was a life that was well lived and he will be missed. In the midst of all this, should we grieve? Yes, it is okay to grieve. It is natural because we love Tony. Even Christ wept when his friend Lazarus died, even though he was about to bring him back to life. Yes, we grieve as Christians, but we grieve with hope. It is okay to be sad today that we do not see Tony anymore, but it would be wrong to think that we will never see him again. It is okay to grieve. It is wrong to despair. Christ is alive. We pray today for Tony that he may complete his journey to heaven. Pray for him every day and for yourselves. Look at him today and say with faith, Tony, you do not belong to death. You belong to Christ. And so do we. Amen. Prayer of the Faithful. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks, first, for the victory of Jesus Christ over sin, fear, and death. His victory allows us to celebrate life and eternal life. This is not an ending for Tony, but a beginning of new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await us in the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son, Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As the family and friends of Tony seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us through this difficult time, that they may receive heavenly rewards for their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our tears of sorrow for Tony be turned into tears of joy in the awareness of the life that he now experiences in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us offer our prayer to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. And let us pray. The response will be, receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, 
Come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual life shine upon him. Receive his soul and let him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Tony in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Tony in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurance of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gonna, please be seated. And we have Kaddish. Thank you for everyone for coming today. Um, as many of you know, Tony and I um, you know, came from different faiths. And um, I came of, you know, though he came from the Catholic religion, we blended our family and blended a lot of our traditions and rituals. Um, in the Jewish religion, there is a prayer called the Mourner's Kaddish. The ironic thing about this prayer is that it's not about death or mourning. It's actually more about life and living. Um, but it's said when we're mourning. Um, in the Jewish religion, you do it once a month for the first year of passing, and then you do it once a year on the anniversary. So I'm going to read it to you all in um, Hebrew. We do apologize. We had intended to have inserts um, today for this, but um, just didn't happen. Um, so I'm going to read it to you in Hebrew, and then I'll read the translation. It typically is sort of a chant in a sing-song way, but I'm just going to just read it because I'm a little rusty on my Hebrew. It goes like this. Yit gadal v'yit gadash shemei raba, v'alma di rachi rute v'am lich malchute, v'chayei chon u'v'yomei chon u'chayei dechol beit Yisrael v'agala u'vizman kariv v'imaru amen. Yehi shemei raba mavarach le'olam u'lamei almaya. Yit barach v'yit tabach v'yit paar v'yit roman v'yit nase. The Yit Hadar, the Yit Ale, the Yit Alal, Shemei de Kudusha, Berechu. Leilam, Min Kolbirchata, Vishirata, Tushbechata, Venechemata, Da Amiran de Alma, the Imaru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya Vachayim, Elenu Vial Kol Yisrael, the Imaru, Amen. O Se Shalom Bim Ramav, Hu, Ya Ase Shalom, Elenu Vial Kol Yisrael, the Imaru, Amen. I have a very old translation in a very old um, prayer book that I was given at my bat mitzvah when I was 13. So if you all know how old I am, do the math. Um, but um, I'm going to read it. It's very um, biblical, but there are more modern translations. But I'm going to read the one that I have. Magnified and sanctified be the name of God throughout the world, which he hath created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during the days of your life and during the life of all of the house of Israel, speedily, soon, and say amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever. Exalted and honored be the name of the Holy One, blessed be he, whose glory transcends is beyond all praises, hymns, and blessings that man can render unto him, and say amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven, and life for us and for all of Israel, and say amen. May he who established peace in the heavens grant peace unto us and unto all, and then say amen.
Good afternoon. Uh, for those of you I've yet to meet, uh, my name is Drew, uh, one of Tony's close friends from childhood. Just want to share some thoughts and words about my brother and our friend Tony. Sisson. Quite honestly, as I stand here and look out to you all, um, I can't believe that we're here. You know, I gave a best man speech 21 years ago, and now I'm doing this. Uh, I know we don't have a crystal ball. I just never imagined it going this way, you know. When Munch and Elisa told me that we were meeting here today, well, I said, well, of course, the Church of Ascension. It makes sense. Uncle Ben's ashes are here in the columbarium. Outside, as will Tony's be across from him. Beyond that, in many ways, this church was part of our families growing up in this community. As I look in this area here, we celebrated many masses. We used to come to Christmas Eve midnight mass. I was sharing with Deacon, which they no longer do. We even performed some traditional Filipino dances right in this space. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think there was some earth, wind, and fire in Shaka Khan that was playing out in that welcome area that we also danced to back in the day. What times we've had here. On behalf of Elisa, Judy, and the family, I would like to thank you all for being here today. This is a sad occasion, but it's celebratory. We're here to meet and honor and celebrate the life of our friend and our brother, Tony. Whether you've traveled far or near, thank you so much. We are happy that you're here. Before I begin, I, I would be remiss if I failed to encourage that we keep in mind and continue to pray for an important person who cannot be here with us today. <clears throat> Our mom, Auntie Lita Sisson, who due to a relentless disease of dementia that she's been battling for two years, is just simply not well enough to be here. And very sadly, is unaware that any of this has even happened. We miss you, Mom, and we are praying for you. The other day, my wife, Lynn, and I were talking about my trip back home in this service. Uh, she told me that one of the things she loved most about Tony is that he was always there. He always made the effort. Whether we were still living here or after we moved away, without fail, when I'd call to tell him that we were coming, his immediate response was always, where are we going to meet? He was one of the best men that I've ever known. We were friends since we were kids. We rode our bikes. We lifted weights together. We shot hoops. We owned the tennis courts at the rec center in the summers of 1983 and 84. We played beach volleyball with friends tirelessly on 67th Street. And we golfed several of the tracks in town, Honeybee probably being the most since it was right outside of his door. We double dated. We cruised the strip on the weekend, <laughs> jamming to the English beat in his white Subaru hatchback that had so many stickers on the back, you couldn't even see out. We put so much mousse in our hair, and we did our best to try to flip it back, to try to look like the drummer from Duran Duran. I don't know how well we did. 
we would check out the latest styles in GQ magazine and head straight to Lynn Haven Mall to shop for skinny ties and pleated pants at Jeans West and try to match what we saw. Chess King was just a little too progressive for us. It was always Jeans West. We watched and memorized John Hughes movies. We listened to Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy albums and laughed till we cried. I experienced a lot of firsts with Tony. He taught me how to drive my drive stick shift. He got me my first job. He took me on my first trip to Blacksburg when I decided I wanted to go to tech. And he gave me my first triathlon bike. Short story, I was a uh, very rough period of time in my life. It was about 19 years ago. And um, Tony said, I'm coming. He and Elisa came without hesitation. Within a few days, they were at my doorstep. And out behind the car came this triathlon bike that Tony built for me. He knew that I was getting into this and uh, was riding a pretty Bobo bike at the time. And he built this, and he brought it, and he said, it's yours. Go haul butt. That's the kind of man he was, you know. So kind, he was so giving. Whatever he had was yours. If he thought you needed it, and oftentimes many of those things were given amidst the silent or not so silent displeasure of Elisa. <laughs> eBay got out of hand there for a little bit. The set of golf clubs in my garage, Tony gave me. He gave bikes that he built, golf shirts and hats, putters that didn't work for him anymore, cars. Some of us still here today have something that Tony so willingly and graciously gave us. But beyond the giving of the gifts, of these types of gifts, Tony gave back to the community that he loved so much. He and Elisa were regulars at the annual Walk for Autism. He supported the local organization for autism called the Eliza Hope Foundation. And while playing the game that he loved most, he participated in many golf tournaments that helped raise money for high school athletics and the Virginia Beach Schools Education Foundation. A few facts. Tony wrote in all caps. Tony was one of the most creative guys that I knew. For as long as I could remember, he loved to draw and design. He had that funny head tilt. Whenever he would look at something that he created, he'd tilt. He'd kind of look at it and I think I like that. His creativity carried over to the work that he did for many years in the event and clothing industry. Every year, another annual event in the area, the Neptune Festival, sand soccer tournament, and every year a new design Tony would help create for it. Especially after Uncle Ben passed on, Tony took his dad's camera and used his gift of creativity in a different way. And he saw the world so beautifully through a camera lens. We have a few prints of his hanging in our house with his name written in caps. He worked so well with his hands. When Tony had an idea, creative idea, about something to build, you couldn't stop him. And he built it to perfection. And he'd tilt and look at it. Tony loved shoes, mostly Nikes. He loved his t-shirts, golf shirts, hats, and Oakley sunglasses. He had a lot of them. And he definitely had a style of his own, didn't he? Uh, there was no one that could pull off shorts, sweatshirt, and a ball cap so stylishly, even if it was 25 degrees outside. That was Tony. He was one of the straightest drivers of the golf ball I've ever seen. When he was on, it was so fun to watch. 
and you knew that he hit it right because he would have that extended pause and then he let it go straight down the middle he loved his friends old and new he loved the people that he worked with very much he loved his dogs and though differences were always there he loved his family so much But Elisa, he loved you the most. If he didn't tell you enough, he told me often that you were the best thing that ever happened in his life. The true love of his life. I really thought this was the year when I saw him last in October and they were going to make the trip. He told me we're going to come see you in the Rockies. We're going to drive some of those Jeep trails that you keep talking about. Well, now you have wings, brother. Come see us anytime. So I encourage us all to cherish the memories that we have of our friend. He was a great son, a brother, friend, and husband. He was a good man. He was the best. We love you, Tony, and we'll miss you always. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest.
save you. 